if you're a returning subscriber, you're welcome. And if you're watching me for the first time, my name is Bridget on this channel. I teach sounds, grammar, compositions, and all the problematic topics in English. But today, I'll teach you how to use these sex irregular verbs. For better understanding, we'll look at the base, the past, and the past participles of these verbs. People find it difficult to identify and use these irregular verbs both in speaking and in writing. Now let's take a good look at these six verbs lie, lay, lean. Lie, lay, lean. The verb lie has two contexts. Lie to sleep, lie to tell lies. That is to say something that is not true. But when you're saying that which is not true, the lie there becomes regular. But when you're using the lie to mean sleep, it becomes irregular. However, when you're looking at the present progressive form, that is where we have L-Y-I-N-G, that is lying. Why are you lying? I am lying down. Look at these examples. He lies a lot. He has lied again. Now observe something. The context of situation determines the meaning you are trying to pass or what you want your, your listener to decode. Is it lay? Is it lay, lied, or lay? I lay on the bed yesterday. The lay here is L-A-Y to denote simple past tense. I lay on the bed yesterday. Another form of lay, lay, L-A-Y, means spread or simply to, to lay eggs. It depends on how you want to use it. It depends on the context as well. For example, we have to lay your bed so you lie on it. Now observe the use of lay and lie in that example. The bed has been laid. That is another use of what? Lay. In that context, the laid there is going to be L-A-I-D. Hang. Hang, hung, hung. Hang, hung, hung. Or hang, hanged, hanged. Now, in this, what is the difference between hung, that is the past tense and the past participles? We have the first one which is hung and hung. The second one is hanged and hanged. Now, when do we use them? Of course, the base form is hung. Now, the word of hung has to do with when we refer to inhumans, that is, objects. For instance, when you hang shirt, I want to use that in the past forms. You use hung for shirt, for your hangers, and for clippers, and so on. But when you use it in the context referring to human beings or animals or lower animals, we use hanged. Have you hung my shirt? Has the criminal been hanged? Now note, we have hung referring to shirts and we have hanged referring, hanged referring to human, that is the criminal. This takes us to the use of ring, rang, wrong. How do we use them? Now let's look at these examples. The timekeeper rang the bell for closing or the timekeeper rang the closing bell. This is just the simple past form of ring. Now let's look at when the action is perfected. Have you rung the bell? It sounds absurd, right? Or it sounds funny to non-native speakers, right? Yes, that is the correct form. Not rang the bell, but rung the bell. The timekeeper has rung the bell for closing. Now observe the use of auxiliary attached to it again. The auxiliary has attached 
to attach to the verb to attach to the verb wrong. Grind, ground, ground. When do we use ground? Now we shouldn't confuse the past tense and the past participle form with the use of ground, that is when your car is grounded, that is fixed to a particular spot. We also have the spelling ground, where we stand, where we stand on. The verb grind means to make something smooth, to powder or to break something into pieces. That is when you grind something. For instance, can you get me some ground paper? We mostly say grinded paper or grounded paper or grind paper. Okay, now remember, after grinding your paper, there's an action that has taken place. And that action has become past participle. And so we have ground pepe. Remember, we also use the verb ground also to mean when you know something very well. Now observe the use of these sentences. The context of situation now determines the correct form or which one to use. And grounded in syntax. My car is grounded and gets me some ground pepe. Bind, as we mostly call it, the verb bind. The past form is bound and the past participle is bound as well. We don't say bounded. No, it's incorrect to say bounded. Okay, now let's look at the way we use bind. What does the word bind mean? The word bind means to put something together, to tie something together. Now we have this popular Pentecostal prayer point that we always say as Christians. We often say, I bind and cast the devil. What that simply means is that you put devil together spiritually and then you cast it into the pit of hell. The word bind means to, to tie or to stick something together. Now, how then do you use the, the past and participial form? I have bound it. I have bound it. Meaning that action is completed. Now, I have four copies of my bound projects. I have four copies of my bound projects. That means the project is what? Bound. Or has been bound. Lastly, we have backslide. Backslide, as we mostly call it, means when you're fond of doing that which is right and you disease from it, or you stop doing that which is right. It is called backslide. We mostly use it in the Christian faith. That is, one who goes to church regularly or who serves God religiously, and stops doing that, we mostly say that the person backslid. However, some Englishes use backslided and backsliding, okay, as their past form and their past participle forms. Do you understand that? The faith has backslid from the church. Now observe the use of auxiliary and that of past participle or the participial form. Sister Faith has backslid from the church. So far, we've actually looked at how we use, how we properly use the irregular verbs, which I also call naughty verbs. Isn't it naughty? I hope you've learned something. Have you? Remember to go through this video again if you don't understand. And also remember to subscribe Leave your comments in the comment section below, share, and hit the like button. See you in my next video as I treat other forms of irregular verbs. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.